Okay, so we are, after getting our values of x and the corresponding values of y, we are going to plot the graph, and we are told to use two centimeters to one unit on the x-axis, and two centimeters to two units on the y-axis. So some students, when they just see that, they just go to the middle and just start drawing. No, we don't do that, okay? What we are going to do is, we are going to take a look at the values of x. It starts from negative five and ends at positive three. And we are using one unit. So we are going to consider that, assuming we are starting from negative six, from the left. So this is our x-axis, okay? So negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. So within that range, we can get from negative six to positive four. So we are going to start with negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero. So we are going to imagine that, we are going to imagine that our origin is going to start from here. Now we are also going to consider the values of y. Now remember two centimeters to two units on the y-axis. And our least value of y is negative 12. So considering that it is negative 12, now we can start negative 12 somewhere, negative 14, negative 12, negative 10, negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Our highest value of y is positive 4. So since we are getting 10, then we can even move it two steps ahead. So we can make this our origin, okay? We can make this point our origin because we can get two, four, six, positive six here, and uh, there's even no positive value of y here. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to draw our x and y axis at this point. So you pick your rule, then you draw your x axis. So I have my y axis. So I label them. So we have one, two centimeters to one unit on the x-axis. So one, two, three, four. Then I have my negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. Then we move to the positive values of x, two centimeters to two units for, on the y-axis. So we have zero here, two, four, six. Negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14, negative 16, and then negative 18. So with this, we can also choose to write our scale. It was already given to us, so two centers to one unit on the x-axis, and then two centers to two units on the y-axis. So with that in mind, now we are going to plot them. So we have when x is negative 5, y is negative 12. So we locate negative 5 on the x-axis and locate negative 12 on the y-axis. So this is negative 5, negative 12. Then you mark it. Okay? So we have negative 5, negative 12. Then we have negative 4. x is negative 4. y is negative 5. So negative 4, y is negative 5. So in between negative 4 and negative 6, we have negative 5. So negative 4, negative 5, we mark it. We continue on when x is negative 3, y is 0. Negative 3, 0, this is it, because y is 0. Then we have negative 2, negative... When x is negative 2, y is 3. When x is negative 2, y is 3. So negative 2, between 2 and 4 is 3. So negative 2, 3. Then when x is negative 1, y is 4. Negative 1, 4. So this is negative 1, 4. Then when x is 0, y is 3. When x is 0, y is 3. And then when x is 1, y is 0. So 1, 0, we mark it. When x is 2, y is negative 5. So negative 4 and negative 6, we have negative 5. So we mark it. And then when x is 3, y is negative 12. So 3, negative 12, we mark it. So with this, we are now going to pick a pencil without the ruler, and then we are going to join them, okay? And then we are going to have what we call our maximum curve, and that's the curve for y equals to 3 minus 2x 
minus x squared. So let's do this together. So we join it. So from this point all the way to this point, then we shall have to join negative 3, join here. Then this is our maximum point. So it goes here, turns here, joins here, goes down, comes down to this, and then lastly joins here. So this is our curve. So this is the curve of y is equal to 3 minus 2x minus x squared. So that is the curve y equals to 3 minus 2x minus x squared. Now that we are done drawing the curve, let's answer the rest of the sub-questions. In the first sub-question, we are asked to find the equation of the axis of symmetry. And like I said earlier on, the equation of the axis of symmetry is the line that divides the curve into two equal parts. So if I have a curve like this, what line do you think would divide this curve into two equal parts? So this is the line, okay? So if I should draw a straight line here, okay? I draw booking lines. So we do realize that this is the booking lines. Now, we call this line the equation x is equal to what value of x is here? We realize it is negative 1, okay? So this is x is equal to negative 1. And this is the equation of the axis of symmetry because it is this line that divides this curve into two equal parts. So we answer the first one by saying from the graph, the equation of the axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative one. One. Remember, there's negative one here, okay, on the x-axis, and there's also negative one on the y-axis. So when you write negative one, what are you talking about, okay? So it should be x is equal to what negative one, and that is your axis of symmetry for this curve. Now we move on. The second sub question says we should find the second sub question says we should find the values of x for which y decreases. So, like I was saying, values of x for which y decreases. So you can see that these are the values of y. Okay? And when you move from this point, you realize that y keeps what? We have negative 12. Y is negative 12. Y is negative 6. Y is 0. Y is 3. Y is 4. So to this point, you realize that y has been increasing because it was from negative number. We were from a negative number, which is negative 12. We went to negative um, 6. So it keeps going up negative 4, negative 2, um, 0. We have y equals to 2. So it was always increasing until this point. Now from here, you realize that y will keep decreasing because we have 4 here. Then we have y is equal to what? 2. Y is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 2, y is equal to negative 4 here, y is equal to negative 6 here, y is equal to negative 8 here, y is equal to negative 12 here. So y kept decreasing from this point to this point. The values of y were decreasing from this point to this point. But the values of y were increasing here. And we were asked to find the values of x for which y decreases. So y kept decreasing from this point all the way down. So what values of x are here? We can see from here, x is equal to negative 1. From this point going, y is what? Decreasing. So the values of x, I, I, the values of x for which y decreases is y x is greater than negative 1. When x is greater than negative 1. You realize that when x is greater than negative 1, when x is greater than negative 1, let's say 0. negative 0. 0.9, 
from this point, negative 0 0.9, negative 0 0.9999. Let's see those numbers like negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.2, going 0, 1, 2. All these values of x here, our y is what? Decreasing. Because at this point, even at this point, when x is 2, y is negative what? 5, which means it is what? Decreasing. Okay? So this is when x is what? Greater than what? Negative 1. So our values of y kept decreasing from this point downwards. And those values of x are from negative 1 going. Now we move on. Okay, so students, pay very good attention to this. We are asked to find the values of x for which this is equal to 0. Now remember, we do the graph of 3 minus 2x minus x squared, okay? Now, we have x squared plus 3x minus 3. Now, how do we make this look like this? So, we have x squared plus 3x minus 3. Now, if this is x squared, okay, then it means I have to multiply this by negative 1 to get minus x squared like this. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply through this by negative 1. So, multiply through by negative 1. When I multiply 2 by negative 1, I'll, I'll get negative x squared minus 3x plus 3 is equal to 0. Now, when you compare, if this is minus x squared, this is also minus x squared. But if this is minus 2x, this is minus 3x. So you ask yourself, what do I add to minus 3x to get minus 2x? Okay? What do I add to minus 3x to get minus 2x? That means I have to add what? Positive x. So this will be minus x squared minus 3x plus x. Okay? Plus 3 is equal to x. So you could see here that when I compare this to this, it's the same equation. Why? Because I added positive x here and positive x here. So if I should take this x on the left to the right hand side, it becomes x minus x, which is 0. And I get back this equation. Okay? So what is happening here is I've added 0 to the equation. So this is going to give us, when we simplify the middle term, okay, this is going to give us minus x squared minus 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. It's equal to, sorry, this is equal to x because we have x on the right. Okay? Now, if we should compare this to this, I can also write this same statement as 3 minus 2x minus x squared is equal to x. What you see here as minus x squared is the same minus x squared here. Minus 2x is minus 2x and positive 3 is positive 3. Now, this you see here, 3 minus 2x minus x squared is equal to what? Y. Okay? So this means that our Y is equal to X. So if our Y is equal to X, okay? If our Y is equal to X, it means this is a straight line. Okay? And this is a straight line, and I can see when X is there, Y is there, when Y is there, X is there. So it's passing through the origin. So because this is a straight line, and this is the values of X given, and Y is equal to X, we are going to pick two or three values of X, okay, over here, and then put them here. So we draw a table, okay? When we draw the table, we have our values of x and y. We just pick three values. So let's say when x is negative 3, okay? And when x is 0, and when x is 3. And over here, we are saying y is equal to x. So meaning when x is negative 3, y is also equal to negative 3. So I put negative 3. When x is 0, y is also 0. So I put 0. And then when x is um, positive 3, y is also 3. So we, I put here 3. Now I go to my OXY plane and I draw the straight line, which is these values of x and y. So when we go to the OXY plane, we have when x is negative 3, y is negative 3. So we locate that point. When x is negative 3, y is negative 3. So we have negative 3, negative 3. So negative 3, negative 3, we have a point here. And then when x is 0, y is 0. We have that at the origin. And then the last point is when x is 3, y is 3. So when x is 3, y is 3. We have that over here. So now we pick our rule. Okay? And you can see that this straight line, when I draw it, it will pass through all the three points I've given. Okay? 
So we pick the rule and then we draw the straight line. So it's passing through the origin. So I draw my straight line. So with my rule, I draw my straight line. So this is the line y is equal to x. So this is the line y equals to x. Okay? Now, the line you are seeing here meets this curve at this point. This point and this point. Okay? These two points. So we are going to find the values of x. Okay? We are going to find the values of x for which x squared plus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0. Um, y is equal to um, x squared. Okay, from the graph point, x squared plus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0. x squared plus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0. x is equal to, then we go to the graph. So, from the graph, from the graph point, x squared plus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0. For us to get the values of x, we need to locate the point where the curve is meeting the straight line. So the curve meets the straight line at these two points, this point and this point. So I read the corresponding values of x. So I do this, okay? I draw booking lines here, okay? And then I locate this point. And the second one too, I do this, okay? And then I locate this point. Now, from the graph, okay, from the graph, when x squared plus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0, x is equal to, so between this point and this point, negative 3 and negative 4, I have negative 3.1, negative 3.2, negative 3.3, negative 3.4, negative 3.5, negative 3.6, negative 3.7, and negative 3.8. So my value of x is, x is equal to negative 3.8, and x is equal to, then we come to the second point. If this is 0 and 1, okay, I have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So in between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8, I have 0 0.75. So x is equal to 0 0.75. So these are the values of x for which x squared plus 3x minus 3 is equal to 0. So with this, we have come to the end of this graph. But I told you earlier on, as when you are asked to find the turning point, our turning point will be x coordinate first. So our turning point is negative 1, 4. This will be our turning point. Okay? If you are asked of the maximum value, our maximum value is y is equal to 4, y is equal to 4, and occurs when x is equal to negative 1. That will be our maximum value. Our axis of symmetry, as we know, is x is equal to negative 1. Okay? So, with this, we've come to the end of the lesson. We'll leave you with some more questions to solve until we meet again. Bye!